My name is Stefan and I'm, 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 for the first time I'm on the stage, I'm the regional director for the Balkan countries and also covering the chapter uh, Cluj Napoca from Romania. Um, after I, I, first time I heard about Chobani was from my girlfriend, so I looked it up, but I didn't taste it. Um, the second time was my fellow grinders emailed me that I will be presenting the CEO of Chobani, so hashtag no pressure. Um, and the third time was my first breakfast here in the Bay Area. This, uh, this time, this year, was obviously offered me uh, Chobani yogurt. So what I know and what I read is that Chobani was started with heart. So we will find out how to start up with heart. Uh, please welcome and put your hands together for the f founder and CEO of Chobani and uh, Steve Clemens. Thank you, thank you very much. So, I, I just want to have, you have, a, have a seat. Good to see you, sir, how are you? Thank you. I just want to take stock of something for a minute. Um, many of you are out there, how many of you are actually engaged in startups now? Just put your hands, all, I think everything has to go up, right? And you all think it's tough, right? You think it's tough? It's tough, you, you, you think it's tough? You, you, only Marty, you make it hard. Okay, I want you to imagine this scene for a minute, because I've had the privilege of interview, interviewing Hamdi Ulukaya before, uh, but, but just imagine this. You come to the United States from Eastern Turkey. Uh, you're 23 years old. You speak no English. Dad says, make me some yogurt, uh, or some feta cheese, or white cheese, as you, as you called it. And today, with, you know, shortly after that, that you were, what, 45? So this is 22 years ago. And somewhere between that, when you had no money, you didn't <laughs> speak English, you built a company, and in five years, it went from zero dollars to a billion dollars. So that in unaided financing, you actually have the most successful, fastest startup in the United States, including technology companies. So we're here to talk about it. And Hamdi, thanks for joining us. I just want to find out, as you started this, and maybe you can give us a quick profile of, 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 of how you, you know, got this idea, bought this crazy plant, painted the wall, got the people to be on your side, yeah. and, and now Chobani's everywhere. Yeah, well, Steve, it's good to see you again. It's been a while. Uh, I'm so honored to be here with you guys um, in this town, with this crowd. Um, so before, before I answer that, um, I, I'd like to give you an important message. You guys work hard. You know, you need energy, uh, late nights, um, you know, the brain to go function really better and energy and all that stuff. The best thing you guys can do is eat Chobani. <laughs> <laughs> not Yo Play, not Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so, number one rule: we market all so the Chobani time. So, Chobani is part of the equation of success. Yeah, I converted yeah. Uh, the the guy who was serving me breakfast this morning to eat Chobani, not the other stuff. So, I hope I can convert uh -huh. some of you guys today. It's mo it's extremely important that what we do every day is in our mind, is in our heart, and is in our behavior. And, and, and we are proud about it, and we talk about it all the time. Um, like, be honest with you, when I, when I came here, um, I left because, you know, I was, I was in a political science university, I was mm. writing the paper, and I was Kurdish, and I'm still Kurdish. <laughs> um, I was against these human rights things that was going on, and got in trouble, so I had to leave. And within a month, I left. So I never thought I would be so running a company. stop there for a moment so people hear it. You were an immigrant in the United States, fleeing persecution into this country, and you right. built a company. I just want you to think about that for a minute, because it... Right. Um, and, and, you know, I'm Kurdish. I'm coming from a nomadic background. Um, I don't know the date exactly when I was born, uh, because my family says we were coming back from the mountains. Beautiful childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have access to so many things, but everything I do today is reflects back to home, where I was, where I grew up, my mother, my father, their relationship, their interaction, the, the community, the social order that they had, is done what, what I am today. I mean, everything I learned or I witnessed, I implemented to the way I'm doing things now. And every single day, I have one quality check that I do, mm. is would my mother be okay with this? <laughs> Will your mother be okay? Yeah. And dad, dad, you don't worry about too much, nah, just mom. No, yeah. she, she's no yeah. longer with me, but you have those controls and saying, what I'm about to do or what I'm about to say or what I'm about to act is, 
will she be smile at me if I do it? And, and that's what we bring. We don't bring a lot of, you know, probably money, you know, all the all other stuff, but what we bring is, is, is the richness of the culture mm -hmm. and the family. And, and it gets into a different form when you get here. And I say these things because what I brought with me is the seed, and what I found in upstate New York is the soil, and mm -hmm. it's a perfect climate, and, and, and met, and, and happened what happened. Um, I would, you know, going back to the plant that I bought in 2005, with those four or five factory workers. And the first day, of my first board meeting, I told you this story before, uh, there was Mike, the, um, the maintenance guy, Rick is the operation manager. Uh, so just to be clear, he started with five people. Yeah, and they're yeah. factory workers. They worked in that and craft And they worked plant. for the previous uh, company, right? Yeah, they, yeah, were, they were in the craft, craft, craft for 15, 20 years. And this plant was just closed. This town was devastated. It reminded you that somebody died, that it was very, very important. And the first day I said, so we're gonna go to the Ace hardware store and we're gonna buy some white paints, red paints, and blue paints. Mm. And then we're going to paint these walls. Mike, the, the old guy, he said, tell me you have more ideas than this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, right? I didn't have any other ideas. But, but, you know, but, but, but I just want to, we, we're gonna, I don't want to burn our time on, on this, but I mean, it's very important for people to, to hear that they're thinking about the relevance of your story to theirs. Yeah. And, and because I've, I can share that, you know, when Mike shared that with you and you had just bought this plant, um, I remember another story you shared with me about your lawyer. You called your lawyer and said, I want to buy this place. It's, you know, only $700,000. And, and the lawyer said, Handy, you don't have any money. You don't have any money. And, uh, and he says, by the way, you haven't paid me for six months. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, and it was uh, true. Uh, uh, but but, but how, how, when you look back at those beginnings, and we've got a lot of people here. We've got Wells Fargo, in the, with, hi, Wells Fargo people, advertisement for you. They're in the tent. But if you don't have resources, if you, how do you put together something that's compelling, that gets you know, money to help turbocharge what you're doing? Yeah, I, I try to tell my... Um, colleagues who starts up things is there is no way you can describe what is going to happen when you start the journey. You can only know when you're in it. And the issues are, there are some known issues mm -hmm. where you're going to get the money, who you're going to sell, who's going to make the product, who's going to do this, who's going to do that. But that's also blurry, right? It really didn't happen. The solutions you can't know until you're in it. The danger is, if you don't find out what those are when you start it, um, you know, it could be devastating. I had no idea, I, I'm not just saying it, I had no idea what I was getting into. Zero. Mm. I had two yogurt companies, Danon and Yoplait, the, the world's greatest, at greatest, the biggest yogurt companies, and I wanted to beat them. And I have this old factory, I have five factory workers, and I do not have a lot of money because I just asked them to turn off the lights because the bills were too high. And, and I was so excited because I made this product that mm -hmm. I learned from my mother that it was so delicious and I can get to everybody to get this. But I gotta tell you, one of the best things I've ever done was asking those five factory workers and myself that, that summer to paint that wall. Mm. There's a difference between sitting and wondering and actually doing. When you're in the motion of doing, mm. magic starts happening. And two years and a half later, I launched the product from 2007, October, to 2012. I never left this little town, South Edmiston. Right. I, I ate pizza for lunch for almost every single day and sometimes for dinner, and, and, um, and we slept on the floor. We were shoulder to shoulder with everybody. And by the time we woke up, you know, we said, wow, we, we built something that never been done before. But the, the most important thing 
is everybody's look at you mm. when you are, you know, with those five factory workers because they're going to change their life or move or not and move. three of them are still with you, right? Three of them are still yeah. with me. And I would say that one of the most important things that I've learned throughout this is as a founder, as a startup, while we are focusing on selling more and making money and growing shares and all that stuff, is every minute, every second, every hour, every day, every week, you build a culture. Mm. And that is the one who's going to, what's going to drive your growth going forward. You're going to build this culture. Do you, do you that think, do you, let me just interrupt, do you think a lot of, of high growth founders get that culture thing right? I mean, why, why do you think, I mean, I, I would ask you if there's one thing that differentiates you that you think of, as I've heard you talk about culture before, culture is expensive. Culture costs money and time and attention. Um, and, and as you're talking to this audience, you know, make well, the case I, about why that investment is worthwhile. I, I have a simplest way of saying this. I mean, there is this thing is called Chobani way mm. that everybody knows at the company. But it's not written anywhere. What in the hell does Chobani mean? That's again. Yeah. Oh, Chobani means shepherd. It means shepherd. In Turkish and Greek, yeah. I should have known but that. But there is no... There is no written Chobani way. It's anything that's written in the walls and the papers means nothing unless it's practiced and unless they are uh, in the work every single day. Mm -hmm. so, so basically, culture is when something happens, what you do at that moment, mm -hmm. how you treat your people, how they treat you, how these are all human relationships. Mm -hmm. And if you're paying equal attention to that one as you're paying attention to the product development, sales strategy, marketing strategy, and all that stuff, later on, not in the beginning, but later on, is going to be the most important thing that you've built. So I know you have some Chobani, a Chobani food incubator, that you have these teams that have come in. Yep. You know, you give them small grants. I know there's a bone broth one, which doesn't sound that They're good. Great. They're uh, great. They're uh, great. Maybe like you crazy. can fool me. There's, there's one I know on Misfit Juices. Yeah. Yeah. So when there's you bring these of... folks in, do you encourage them to sleep on the floor <coughs> and hang out? I mean, what, what are the kind of elements of, as you see launching successful new startups in the food area. And as I understand it, this is theirs. You actually don't have an equity no. stake in them, right? No, we give them an office. We give them access to all Chobani, including myself. So you may be actually helping to hatch your eventual, eventual competitors. Well, there's no yogurt company in there. Ah, OK. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> they applied, actually. Uh, this is like, yeah. <laughs> um, they, um, they have access to all Chobanis and f food safety, marketing, sales, everyone. And we're trying to tell them that this is what it looks like from inside. Mm. And, and, and it's possible. Uh, I think their experience has been amazing. Uh, we're going to do the end at the Expo West. They're going to have a booth. Uh, I was supposed to cook with them last week at Upstate. I couldn't do it, so we'll, we'll do that. But the, some of them are going to be big. Mm. The, the thing is, you know, I was, you know, I had a, a simple life in upstate New York, and I, I like to think I still do. Um, it's great to build wealth. It's great to make money, and it's perfectly fine. But this journey is a lot bigger than that. Mm. Um, you can basically help people to change their life. Uh, not by, by, with your products, but also the way that you do your products. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in two communities in upstate New York and Idaho, which I'm going tonight. Magic Valley. Magic Valley. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, if you haven't been to Idaho, don't listen to news. Go there. It's a beautiful place. Um, Magic Valley, Idaho loves immigrants, too. I, I they was do. Just, yeah. Know, doing a Google yeah. search on Absolutely. you and pops up that, that in these times we're in, they, they love what you brought to the community and it's expanding like crazy. Absolutely. I'm glad you said that, Steve, because there's some misunderstanding out there in the marketplace. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the opinion place. I, I opened the doors to the community. Mm. The, one of the first things I said, I said, we're not locking ourselves between these four walls. Let people to be part of this success. Let them feel that they have been doing this. Because you share, it doesn't get less, it gets more. Mm. Um, and South Edmiston community, the Norwich community, really owned Chobani. And when I needed at contractors, I always went to local first before I went further up. Uh, and when I made a decision that I was going to go 
a little bit more, I always ask people, should we do it, should we not? And I made, made it everybody to be part of this, uh, this decision making. In the end, you know, there's two Chobani homes, upstate New York and Idaho. One is red, one is blue. One is on the other side, one is on the other side. But when it comes to the environment, how you make yogurt and how you are in the, in the it's just human, it's just beautiful. Uh, I started hiring refugees from refugee center in Utica five years ago. Hmm. Today, we have 600 refugees from 19 different countries. Hmm. But at the same time, in Idaho, unemployment rate went from 7% to 2.5%. And the community that we've been in, declining 20 years in the, in, since from 2011 to 2012, has gone up. Wow. New farmers that opened it, you know, unemployment went down to 5%. So, in the, in the startup entrepreneurial way, if you look at it, you can create wealth, but at the same time, you can create beautiful lives for a lot of people. And that's why I value this a lot, and I, that's why I love Chobani a lot, is because it's not yours anymore. It's, it's, it's whoever gets involved, whoever touches, and they all add something to it and, and become something extremely powerful. You know, the other thing I wanted to ask you, just again, thinking about our audience and, and their experiences, um, I know that you, when you were building the business, it's a remarkable thing. You believe in keeping things really simple. Paint your own wall, hang out with your, you know, your workers, yeah. uh, sleep on the floor. And that may be too simple. But, uh, uh, but you did, you know, quicken books until your firm was worth more than $700 million. Which no, no, our sales were $700 million. I was still operating on QuickBooks. Yeah, QuickBooks. Yeah. So why did you give up QuickBooks? <laughs> <laughs> I try hard, I try hard <laughs> not to. I bet you didn't want to. And that was the last no, time I understood the, 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 the seri financials. The, the serious question is, and I've asked you this before, but I think it's important for people to know from your experience, if you were to do this all over again, I mean, I, I guess you wouldn't change anything because you've become ridiculously successful. But if you were to convey something to the folks out there of the misstep to avoid that you wished you could have avoided, what would that be? I totally agree on the simplicity. We try to make things complicated more than what actually is. Um, I've never made it complicated. And I always ask, I don't understand this, what does that mean? Um, and so keeping it simple is extremely important. The biggest mistake I've made is not a mistake, it's a human thing, is when the business reached so fast to a billion, and when I opened the plant in Idaho, my early guys and myself, our capabilities were not, you mm. know, we, we, we've never operated two plants before, we never did this complex distributions and all mm. that stuff, and our customers were asking more because we were becoming a very major player, and some of us, we couldn't handle the work. Mm. And these were my brothers and sisters, and I work with them, I stay with them, I start with them, I cannot let them go, right? right. I cannot, I just can't. I mean, it's just impossible. Um, and some of us is going to come to that point that will make some difficult decisions. And I think mm. thinking about that early on, making sure that when you promote people, when you give them titles, what will happen if your business becomes this? and if that person is going to be able to grow as much as you know, business grows. So how many of you are sitting next to a friend right now? Okay, just stop it. Get, get rid of them, move away, <laughs> no, 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 meet no. new people. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, is that the you, message? No, it's not the message. <laughs> 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 I, I would say in the growth area, this human, this human um, you know, dilemma that comes, mm that you have to do right for the work and business, and there's a way of doing it, and of mm. course. Um, and you need, um, you know, from that five, 10, 40, you know, 100, most of them are still in the company, and they still carry this, mm. this, this passion. Um, you develop friendship, brotherhood, sisterhood, you know, you develop a lot of strong relationship, and and you just want to make sure that you always detach yourself from these personal things hmm. if you want to take your company to the next level. Right. Um, I, I think ultimately I've done the right, right decisions and I'm still friends hmm. with almost most of them. Okay, you can stay where you're yeah, at. Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. Uh, but let me ask you, Gene, in, in just the, the minute we have left, the other thing you've done uh, last year that I think deserves um, attention, uh, but I also know it was very hard for you that you spent millions of dollars trying to do 
uh, a good thing. It, your company is still private. It's a, it's a limited partnership, as I understand it, and, and you gave 10% of your company to your, your 2,000 plus employees and said, I'm going to give this to you right. uh, at, at some point when you do an IPO, which I know some fake news operations have continued to say it's imminent. It's fake news. Uh, uh, but but uh, not the Atlantic, by the way. Yeah. Um, but unless you tell us so now when it, when it will happen. But, but I, I'd like to know, I mean, I, I think that what you did in terms of addressing stakeholding for your employees is not something you've seen many people like you do. And I know it was hard, it was legally hard to do. Yeah. So just, just a few thoughts on that, why you did it, and, and to leave that, I mean, when we're talking about culture, leave some element of why you did it with our audience today. Right, I mean, I, um, I'm glad you asked this because I started with five, I was there when it became 2000, I'm still there. And, you know, you look at these small towns, um, you look at, People work so hard, and you know we always paid better. We always did the for one k. We always did the insurance. That I, my insurance is similar to everybody mm -hmm. else's. We've always done much much better than what the industry standards is. But still, you make all these calculations. You say, how are they going to retire? How are they going to make life better for their family, for their children? And and by heart, I'm a factory worker. So if you ask, who, what are you, number one, I would say factory workers. 20 years ago, I would have said I'm a shepherd. But today, I'm mm. saying I'm a factory worker. Mm. And this income inequality is, is, is extremely out of control when it comes to um, you know, the, 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 the manufacturing side. So, and I'm going to give you one more thing, is when I grew up, I hated CEOs and big business people. I literally disliked them dramatically. So, for this reason, you know, being selfish, I couldn't say the Chobani story was completed unless this thing was done. Hmm. Maria, who started with me, right. Rick, who started with me, or, or Frank, saw everything from the hmm. painting the wall to this. They've been part of everything. They work like I did, Thanksgiving, Christmas, hmm. New Year, every day. Yes, they had a job. Yes, they got good income, but that just doesn't complete. They have to be part of the success, and their family has to be part of the success. And that's what completes. And Maria is going to do well, and Rick is going to do well, and 2,000 others are going to do well. And if he, in, in the Valley, this happens a lot. You know, that's the practice that they do. But we have to spread this to all the sectors across the country, especially in manufacturing, making sure that the working class, uh, by their putting their heart and soul and energy every day working and helping the companies they built, has a stake on that company for their families and for themselves going forward. Well, so. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope all of you found some of the stories of Hamdi Ulukaya useful. Ladies and gentlemen, Hamdi Ulukaya, CEO of Chobani, thank you so much. Good luck, thank you so much.